scarring of the lungs will stay there, just like any scar on your body. If you cut yourself, you have a scar, it's going to stay there, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean problems unless you keep it that way. Hi everyone, Dr. Naveed Shah here. And before we get into the video, I want to tell you about this video's sponsor, the Delta V. Delta V is the all-in-one lung training solution with adjustable airflow. Whether you're recuperating from a respiratory ailment, rehabbing your lungs, eager to boost your lung capacity, or dedicated to cultivating optimal lung health, Delta V stands ready to accompany you every step of the way. Visit our website, deltav.rehab, or call us at 410-871-4601 to order your Delta V today. Now let's get into it. On a chest x-ray, we have a lot of patients that have a lot of scarring. After their pulmonary function test and after doing rehabilitation, they have a huge increase in lung functions, but the scarring is still visible on the chest x-ray, which kind of discourages people, but they don't understand that your lung functions are good. You know, your compliance with your lungs are good. It's just scarring left over. Okay. So to, uh, to make a lung more compliant, you have to either stretch it out, you know, kind of stretching out a therapy band or something, and you stretch it out doing lung stretches or respiratory muscle training. Respiratory muscle training would be very high uh, in favor because of the muscle requirements to open up those lungs that might be very stiff because of all that scarring. So you can do something with a Delta V where you place the Delta V, set it to a starting setting of a four or five, breathing in. Now you notice when I breathe into my max, I don't go straight to exhale. A lot of people do that. You don't ever do that. What you want to do is keep encouraging a deeper breath, even though it feels like you've tapped out. So when I breathe in, after I've inhaled and let's say I've tapped out, and I try to keep inhaling for an additional one or two seconds, I'll, then I'll go straight to exhale. I'll, I won't go to my max and, and blow out. I will never do that. When I do proper respiratory muscle training, it's full. Now, let's say I don't have a Delta V. You can use coffee straws, uh, the little stirs that you just stir coffee up with. Uh, I'm not talking about the sticks. I'm talking about the straws. There's a little small straw with two dot, you know, two holes in it or the one hole in it. Not going to get too far with the sticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You won't get too far with the sticks besides the splinter, maybe. You know, but um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you grab three or four of them, it might cost you a cup of coffee. But if you grab three or four of them. Uh, you place it in your mouth and you do the same thing. Just keep your lips nice and sealed because if you open up your lips, you might accidentally dr drag one of the straws and inhale it, you know, even though it'll be kind of tough because how long it is. But it could still happen. So you just want to hold on to it and just breathe in as deep as you can, just like with Delta V. You would breathe in. And if you, if you feel that th four straws is too easy to breathe in and out through, it's not giving you a lot of resistance, take one of the straws away and breathe in through three straws instead of four, you know. Uh, you can also purse your lips and on your inhale and exhale to simulate a respiratory muscle trainer that adds resistance by simply doing this. Not just breathing in, that's not adding resistance. There's barely any resistance if my mouth is wide open. Purse your lips like you're about to kiss or, or you, know, you know, whistle or something, you know. So you would breathe in. Work on both inhalation and exhalation. That will make your lung compliance very, very easy. Another way is taking a straw, not a straw, but a belt or a strap. It could be elastic too. Even the therapy bands. That yeah, you therapy can bands. Kit. You could take something like this. Don't tie them. You just cross them and you pull your tension. You create your own weight. You pull tension. Make sure it's not on your stomach, it's on your ribs. Okay, then you, as you breathe in, the respiratory, the, 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 the muscle strength is relying on the resistance that you're providing it through the belt. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I breathe in, I show uh, people in third world countries this. This actually helps them quite a bit. So they breathe in. And 
that will add a tremendous amount of weight on those intercostal muscles and, you can and use, your diaphragm. You can even use like a towel or a thin blanket anything. or something. Yeah, anything like that will work. Yeah. Uh, but doing that around six times a day, you know, six times a day. I know it sounds like a lot, but this is your life. You know, I, a lot of people, I was bringing up on the last, uh, our last show, uh, that a lot of people look at heart disease as being strict. You know, like if you have, if you have a myocardial infarction, you know, get into rehab right away because you're a ticking time bomb. You don't understand that if I, if you were dunked into water and you, and there was a glass top or something, pushing you down, drowning you, and you couldn't resurface because that glass top on there won't allow you to breathe air, you would take a heart attack any day of the week because you don't want that feeling of drowning. Heart attacks are quick. So what I'm trying to say is that some people in here are drowning, right? The words that are being described is them drowning, and you're basically demonstrating the <laughs> you're you're, you're <laughs> You know, you're, you're, you're basically talking about the water of, you know, uh, there's a saying. It's a, it's a, it's a, Jack Nicholson said it a lot, uh, in 92. Man, there was a saying. He's like, oh, yes, you're describing the water. He's like, I'm drowning here, but you're describing the water. Basically, same situation in, in a sense, you know, and it's a different analogy for that, but, uh, but, if you're drowning and you're wanting to catch your breath, you want to get just one last drop of air, you do anything for that versus a heart attack. You would take a heart attack any day of the week because you know the heart attack's quick. But you're here drowning and you're describing the water of you drowning. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's uh, respiratory care, pulmonary rehab is essential for yourself, rehabilitation, it's an investment in yourself. Because you're, you're not buying a, a, a anything besides rehabilitating yourself for a better life. To walk further, to be able to take baths, to be able to go outside and walk and play and do what you want to do, go around the park or something. But if you keep this going, this disease, and it just keeps progressing, it's just going to get worse.